Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. Now, everybody likes to say that the Strife is one of the most important blasters ever released, and I will agree with that. I think the Strife is a very important release, and I think there's a reason why it stood up over the years. However, in my opinion, there is one that is more important than the Strife was when it came out, and that is the Raven. This blaster is quite possibly the most important blaster Nerf ever made, and today I'm going to explain why. <music> So the Raven, a blaster that actually inspired the Strife's design heavily, I mean you can tell just by looking at it, but we'll get into the design later, this blaster is essentially a bullpup magazine fed flywheel semi-automatic blaster, a mechanism that's actually more complicated than the Strife and came before the Strife. Just a quick disclaimer, this yellow version of the Raven right here is no different than the standard Elite Blue version or the Raven Fire version. However, if you have an original and strike green version, the performance is obviously going to be lacking. But I'm not going to really be talking about that today. I will discuss that in a different video for some reason if you guys want me to, but it doesn't really matter. I want to give a huge shout out to Phase 1 Foam for letting me have this thing because this yellow stinger print is exceedingly rare compared to other Ravens. And this is like my dream come true. This is like one of my dream blasters and I will treasure it forever. But first of all, we gotta start out with the design. And granted, this thing has seen history, so the prints aren't all in the best condition, but I'm going to be talking about the design anyways. This blaster looks absolutely incredible and is single-handedly one of the greatest designs Nerf ever did, not just because if you actually like use the blaster as a bullpup and you imagine the blaster being the same proportions as the Strife and cutting it off here so that all this is just a stock, the blaster is tiny, it is microscopic, it is single-handedly the most cqb blaster nerf ever made, and I absolutely love this design to pieces. This blaster has everything a good design should have. It's got the camouflage pattern, the actual shape of the shell is simplistic, yet highly detailed and easy to modify or paint, even though I'm not painting this one. Each side of the shell is slightly different, since you have the flywheels and motors on this side, and the batteries on this side, but it actually makes up for it by having the rest of the shell be perfectly symmetrical, and it actually has a carry handle on top, which seems counterintuitive because all the stuff going on is back here, but really quickly, if you just like, if you just do this with it and put an original reek, it's perfect. It is the best thing ever. This is, this is beautiful. Just, oh, oh, it's so good. It's made for this barrel. It's just, oh, it's perfect. Oh, it's so good. It's such a good design. It's such a timeless design. It's such a nice design that just works. And yes, and strike barrel attachment lug, even though this barrel is plenty long enough already. Let's talk about ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip, a foregrip, questionably, and a stock. I'll talk about the foregrip thing in a second. But first, let's talk about the main grip. You recognize it? Yep, it's the original Elite style, and you know what that means, it's really good. And in fact, this was the first blaster that tried the original Elite style, and you can tell the kind of transition from the N-Strike style to the Elite style. It's still got some of the styling details from the N-Strike style, but it's the new shape and improved shape of the original Elite style, and it works wonders for this blaster. I feel like it wasn't fully developed yet, and when the Strife came along and improved upon it, the Strife is a little bit more rounded, and it's a little bit more filleted on all angles. This one is a little bit more angular and not quite as refined as the Strife's grip, but that does not make this grip bad. This grip is still really, really good. As for the stock, it is the perfect length. It is super duper close to being the perfect length. So close that I can't even complain about it. It's a little bit small on the back, but good heavens, is it a comfortable stock. One of the best stocks that Nerf ever did and ever will make. As for the foregrip thing, question mark. I mean, this right here, foregrip, I guess. You can put your hand right there and that's where I end up putting my hand. I just stepped on something sharp. But that's where I end up putting my hand, and that's probably where you'll end up putting your hand too. So you could of course attach a barrel extension and then put a foregrip on it, but there's a reason you probably won't want to do that, which I will show in the firing demo. So how does this blaster work and what are the triggers like? Well, you put a magazine in, you rev, it's semi-auto. Putting the magazine in and taking the magazine out is buttery smooth, and this is one of the most beautifully designed magwells ever. I could do this all day, every day. Oh, it's so good. 
And this blaster has all three triggers, being a flywheel blaster. It has a rev trigger, a main trigger, and a mag release. Going over the mag release first, it is actually very nice and clicky. It is a paddle style mag release hidden in this tiny compartment behind the stock, and it is wonderfully designed. It is very easy to put your hand up like this, pull the trigger, and pull the magazine out with one hand without even thinking about it. Or if you really want to and you're a weirdo, you can take your hand off and do it the other way. But I don't understand why you would ever want to do it that way. It seems so counterproductive. You can just do this while you're still holding it. As for the main trigger and the rev trigger, the rev trigger, it's just like the strife. It's nice and clicky. I love the rev trigger. Oh, it's so good. As for the main trigger, because think about the complex mechanism that's going on here. The main trigger has a mechanism that connects from here all the way back here to a pusher. It's actually really good. It feels very nice. I'm not going to say it's better than the Strife, because it really isn't. You can't beat a direct pusher like that. But for a complex bullpup style trigger, like working like this, it's actually really nicely done. And I love this trigger. I love this trigger a lot. I love it a lot. I will argue that the Moto Blitz, for example, is a little bit more refined. But then again, the Moto Blitz just came out, and this is like a 10 plus year old blaster. So what am I going to say? But yeah, you load, you rev, you fire. And again, snappy trigger pull. We gotta talk about the motors here really quick though, because these motors are loud and proud, and they've got flywheel brakes in them. Listen. Flywheel brakes. Thank you. I love when blasters have flywheel brakes in them. You know how much I love blasters with flywheel brakes in them. Let's go on to the firing test. First, without any barrels on it. There you go. Now with a short barrel on it. And now with a long barrel. I will be surprised if a single dart makes it out. Oh! Yeah, barrel drag is an actual issue with this blaster. have one real issue with this blaster and that is just an issue that all flywheelers face when you put too big of a barrel on them. Barrel drag is an actual problem. Because the flywheels are only one bit right here that is propelling the dart, the dart has to make it through all of the barrel that you put in front of it with no propulsion at all. So it doesn't work like a real firearm, it just works like trying to shoot it through a plastic tube, like it's not going to help you at all, and it decreases performance by a landslide, even though, come on, the recon barrel on this thing looks absolutely amazing. But with that out of the way, what do I think of the Raven? <sighs> it's beautiful. It's perfect. In every way. It's a dream come true. It's everything I could ever have wanted out of it. It is better than I originally thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be mediocre at best and subpar at worst with just this expensive paint job, but no. It is actually a super good and usable blaster in its stock state, and when modified like the Strife, oh boy, you could do some, you could do quite a bit with this nugget. I'm not really going to modify this. I'm going to leave this one stock. I will probably get another one if I want to mod it, just because this thing's got history behind it. This thing is awesome. And once again, thank you, Phase One Foam. I know you told me not to thank you, but you know what's screwed. I'm thanking you anyways. Everybody go subscribe to Phase One Foam's channel. It's his reason that I have this thing in the first place. He, he reunited me with my baby. I love this blaster so much. If you can find one for any sort of bargain whatsoever, take it and run. Come on, these things are expensive and hard to find. And if you can find one, 
please get it. It is an awesome blaster and is definitely worth having in your collection. Thanks for watching. Bye.